there is absolutely no better feeling in golf than absolutely curing an iron shot right at the center of the club face, feeling that compressed impact and having the ball sail onto the green. However, the majority of golfers have never ever experienced that and never actually used the correct part of the golf club, the sweet spot. So where is the sweet spot? Well, this is my A tie, and the center of this A tie is probably around somewhere between the fourth and fifth groove. So one, two, three, four, and I'm gonna put a red dot on that club face. And that provides us with a huge problem and impact. Let me explain. I'm using this board to represent a pretty tight line on the fairway. And you can see that red dot on the club face indicating the center of the golf club. So as I move the club head in towards the golf ball, you can see that the bottom few grooves of that club would make contact with the ball the red sweet spot would not make contact with the ball. I therefore wouldn't be able to use the correct part of the golf club. Now what happens if I change the shaft angle? What about if I lean the club shaft away from the target? Well, that red dot actually gets further away from the back of the ball. So if I'm someone who leans the club shaft back at impact, I have got no chance of using the center of the golf club and the back of the ball. What about if I lean the club shaft forwards? Well, now I can start to present the dot on the club face, that sweet spot, to the back of the ball. This is the only way that I can use the correct part of the golf club to have some forward shaft lean. Now I reckon I need to lean that shaft forward by probably some 10 or 15 degrees. I'd love you to follow this little sequence of events to help you find the centre of the club more often. You are going to, if you could, get a sharpie, draw a dot between those fourth and fifth grooves on the golf club. Then what you're gonna do is you're gonna just take a setup to the golf ball. I'd say this is an A time. So as I take a setup, it's quite clear for me to see that that dot on the club doesn't line up with the back of the ball. So what I'd love you to do is focus on the dot and move the dot closer to the back of the ball. Don't overthink it and just think about what you would have to do. Now we've already discussed there needs to be some shaft lean in there. So as I start to do that, as I start to put that shaft lean in, I can start to now see that the dot on that club lines up with the back of the ball. Just look what's happened to my body. Let me do that again. I naturally, because I had to push that shaft forward, I naturally had to feel like the weight shifted onto my lead side. I naturally had to feel like there was some rotation of my hips. There was a little bit of rotation of my upper body. And it's that rotation, if you notice, that moved the handle forward. As I'm doing that, you'll see that the trail knee has kicked in a little bit. The trail heel has left the ground a little bit. And by simply focusing on that dot and trying to get it to basically line up with the back of the ball, it pretty much got me into this perfect impact position. Now, what I'd love you to do from there is take a little snapshot, take a, a mental image of what that might look like. So great if you're doing this in front of a mirror, or maybe even just take a mental image of what that feels like. What does that impact position feel like and how does it differ from your setup and it will be quite different. The next little task, and this is sort of phase two, is to take your address position where the dot wouldn't line up with the back of the ball, make a backswing, and then try and move towards a position where the two would line up. So now we're connecting our setup and our impact and we're learning how to go from one to the other. Yes, it's at slow speed and there's no strike at this point, but you're learning the difference. You're learning how to move from setup to impact. So phase three, this ball hopefully won't reach that water. Take a setup, find your impact, line the two up, and then go ahead and chip one. So I'm then starting to create a little impact. And when I created a little impact, that ball has gone, well, you saw how far it went. It really didn't go far at all. Yet I can still tell you it was at the center. I can still tell you it felt compressed I can still tell you it felt really solid. And that's me using the right part of the golf club. So what I would then do is I would start to put that into a mini swing. So this time I'm gonna go a little back swing and I'm gonna to move to impact, but this time make that one movement. Now, because there's a little bit more speed here, this ball may go in the water, but as I say, I'm using range balls, so it's absolutely fine. So now I'm gonna go, I'm gonna take my starting position and I'm gonna move it into my impact position. And that one is wet. But again, I contacted the ground after the ball, so it tells me my strike was good. I again felt that compressed feeling. I know it was on the right part of the golf club. And the key really is the ball flight. Even though that was an eight iron, I've projected that ball out fairly low. And the reason for that is because I'm delivering a club shaft which is lent forwards. If you can deliver a club shaft which is lent forwards and you can get the golf club to land target side of the ball, you will then 
in a position where you're using the right part of the golf club. Now, if you're someone who consistently uses the low part of the club, and I said at the start, there's so many of you out there, there are clubs that can help you. You know, Taylor may do golf clubs which help those kind of golfs, really wide soles. And what that does, that wide sole drags the center of gravity of the golf club much lower in the golf club. So if you're a low face striker, you can actually still get some pretty good results, but you are going to get better results if you can learn to use the golf club in the way that it was designed. Plus you're gonna get some benefits like as the shaft of these length forward, you get more ball speed, you get better trajectory, you get better consistency in strike because you're hitting down on the golf ball. So many good things happen when you can start to get the sweet spot of the golf club lined up with the back of the ball. So our final stage is just to do what we've just done, but just to add a little bit of speed. You know, we're starting to move towards full speed and this one won't be quite at full speed, but I'll be taking my setup position and I'll be moving into my impact position, focusing on that mental image that I took at the start, focusing on the dot on the club and getting it to line up with the back of the ball. And this is the best part about the drill. There's no cheating. So let me hit two golf balls and I'm gonna try and hit them very differently. I'm gonna try and do the first one correctly. I'm gonna try and get that really nice impact that we're on about. So I can see the dot on the club. I'm gonna rehearse my impact, which is there. I'm gonna go ahead and just do a half swing, but try and get to that perfect impact. Now, that felt really, really solid at the middle. And this one, I'm gonna try and do what I tend to see quite commonly, you know, weight staying back, shaft being delivered, lent back, really difficult to get the dot on that club lined up with the back of the ball. Yeah, different ball flight, definitely didn't feel as solid. Let's go and grab those golf balls. So here they are. Now I was using range balls, but what do you see? Well, one of them, hope you can see that, red dot on the golf ball because I used the correct part of the golf club. The other one, completely clear, no markings. So if you do this and you put that little dot on the club face and hit some shots, if you can go find those golf balls, you're gonna be able to find out exactly which part of the golf club you used. I lined that dot up with that part of the golf ball. It's there, clear to see. As we said, no cheating. That's how you're gonna test yourself. So it's so important to get the most out of your game and out of your iron play that you're using the right part of the club. So many golfs that I see have never done that. They've never experienced that sweet spot, that compressed feeling that we search for. And trust me, once you do it once and you've got that feel, you're gonna to want to do it over and over and over. And that little exercise, that sequence of events will allow you to do that. Let me just hit one more to finish. I'm gonna try and put a little bit more speed in here so we can get all the way back to that flag. Okay, a little bit more speed. Did I judge that one well enough? It's a little closer, but still a little bit short. So use the center of the golf club much better than using the bottom. I'm sure you knew that, but that's how you do it.